hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for the real housewives of potomac season 8 episode 13 if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time i upload a video oh and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you don't have to search for the videos because people are being unsubscribed and they're unaware so just take a look okay before we get into it and why y'all doing that child let's get into it if we're gonna get into it when the episode first opens up mia is at the house with g and ashley is coming over so she's asking G if he had a good time at the oregano rolling event, honey, because there wasn't nothing else going on. And she had gotten into it with Karen and called her old. I mean, you might have called Karen old, but Karen's still holding, though. <laughs> Baby, she's still holding. So Ashley shows up. Hey, girl. So they go over there. They sit down. They start talking. Mia asks what's going on with Ashley and the divorce. And she's telling Ashley what Gordon said about the sugar daddy arrangement of it all. Ashley starts with the tears and she was like yeah, it's just about security because I don't want to be outside with my boys Ashley is quite hilarious to me because aren't you the one that talked about Candace for this very reason because her mama was helping her you were in her mother's home her mother's house remember when you kept repeating that when y'all had that little butter knife incident remember you kept repeating that and y'all made it an issue that her mom was paying for things but you're depending on Michael. So sometimes it happens. Anywho, she says she was divorcing him by the end of the year. Child, what year? Moving forward. So then Mia brings up Robin's trip to the DR. Everybody's invited, including Wendy. It's supposed to be all about fun. So we shall see. In the next scene, Aneka is walking in slow motion to meet up with Wendy. The sit down. Let's get into it. <laughs> Child, I wish I had some dramatic music to drop right here. And I was like, now Wendy walking up there completely silent. Baby, she didn't say a word until she had a seat. I said, Wendy, child, this is a fool. So Aneka starts talking first. Wendy said, you know, I just feel like you said a lot of damaging things and you said them about my mother and you know that that is damaging to our culture. You know this. So stop acting oblivious. So Aneka starts to tell her about what Lebe said. Lebe is messy boots. I could tell by that little smirk and that little grin on her face when she walked through that door, baby. She is ready for the camera. She wants to be a part of this show so badly. Girl, can't you see you got set up for the okie doke? And I don't want to hear nothing about it because I know that woman is messy. The receipts that Wendy posted on Instagram were Lebe trying to get an end to whatever it is that Wendy is attached to. Now, do I think Wendy probably was like, oh, no, there's only room for one? She probably did. But this whole thing is Lebe and her relaying messages and playing telephone. So Anika was like, you know, I just felt like Wendy disliked me. So I just knew that I was coming into a group that you weren't going to let me be a part of. Wendy then says, well, girl, my mama and my sister denied those allegations. So you keep repeating them, but they denied them. Child, not them flashing back to that rehearsed sit down. I said, okay, now this is not a receipt we need to see. Because Wendy, this looked about as rehearsed and crazy as I'll get out. So then Wendy asked, what did I do to you? Okay, me. What did I personally do to you? So then Aneka starts talking about to Wendy's mama again in that dang on shrine. The bottom line is this. Aneka is acting oblivious as to why Wendy will not move forward with her. But girl, you call the woman's mama a witch to her face. So, I mean, I don't know what else you want her to say. Like I said, Lebe seems messy. So who's to say that she's telling the truth? Now, me personally, if I hear my mom's a witch, we would just have to move forward and interact only when needed for this show. Because this is not getting anywhere. Wendy is not budging. And Aneka is standing on business about this shrine. So Wendy said, well, you called her a witch. See, the difference between you and me is that this is tangible. You said to me to my face that my mom was a witch. But what you're talking about is hearsay. Wendy then's like, listen, girl, we can just coexist because you don't want peace. Okay, I'm talking and you're talking in circles. You do not want peace. So she gets up and she walks out. So Aneka is 
talking to the producers and she's crying, talking about their, their family tried to bully me. So what I got from this whole sit down is that Lebe started it all. And Ashley tried to call strife before they even interacted with each other. Ashley tried to drive a damn wedge. What the both of you are not understanding is that there is a common denominator. There is a middleman. The two of you should have talked to each other. And Aneka, you came in just believing what Lebe told you instead of talking to Wendy. And Wendy, you caught the girl a crackhead. Okay, Judge Mathis, you called her a crackhead. <laughs> Maybe y'all never stood a chance, honey. I'm not going to let y'all worry me. In the next scene, Chris and Candace are at home, honey. You know they like to look comfortable and casual, honey. They comfortably fussing about this purse that Candace bought. So Chris brings up when Candace was fussing at him about working at that rooftop restaurant all day and night, but now she works all the time. Now the tables have turned and there's no time together. And child is giving Todd and Candy. Then he brings up the IVF journey and he asked if she thought about it. And she's like, I think about it all the time, day and night. Candace is like, look, I don't want to put any more hormones in me and it could affect whatever is growing in my boob. She's concerned because of her family having a history of breast cancer. Now, Candace, I know it's concerning, but it's standard practice for them to monitor it. There's a growth, but it isn't cancerous and it's not concerning enough for them to remove it. Trust me, they are not going to let you just walk around with a, a lump and a hump if they think that it needs to be removed. And what Candace needs to understand also, as I'm watching this, ma'am, I'm speaking directly to you respectfully. You need to understand that there is a way to speak to your husband as to not emasculate him on national television. Okay? Girl, it's a fool. And Candace, also, don't try to speak anything other than what they said. Okay? If that paper said no cancer, there's no cancer. And you may have dense breast tissue. You really do need to get a second and third opinion until you feel comfortable enough with the diagnosis. But as long as you get a piece of paper saying that there is no cancer, let's praise the Lord. In the next scene, it's the day of Grace's graduation, which is Giselle's daughter. And I thought it was so sweet to see the flashback of the girls because, you know, seven years ago when they started, those babies were so little. So Giselle was kind of like giving her a pep talk or whatever. And I was like, oh, how special. You know, we got a sneak peek of her graduation. And here's Pastor Jamal speaking his pastoral speech. And her dad was in attendance as well. May he rest in peace. You know, it was beautiful to see that. And I'm glad that her dad got to witness it. I thought that was so special. I was like, see, sometimes Giselle can be all right, but only in the settings with her children. Moving forward. In the next scene, Mia, Robin, and Neca are at a boutique shopping for things to wear to the DR. They start talking about Karen. Mia's like, yeah, I mean, she's fun unless she's around Wendy. Nah, baby, that's you. Okay, that is you. You couldn't wait to run up and tell Giselle about her. Oh, she said that I did this and look, Karen's bothering me. You couldn't wait to tell your leader. She tells you when to think, when to drink your water. <laughs> Child, she tell you what to do. Karen operates alone. Now, if it's one thing I can say, Karen gonna operate solo dolo. She don't give a damn about Wendy being there. Wendy does not affect anything that Karen does. Child, please. Y'all just love throwing that woman's name around. So then Ineka starts talking about her and Wendy meeting up and Wendy not wanting to move on. And Robin gonna have her nerd just start speaking her speech. Robin, you are the wrong one to talk about moving on. There could have been several opportunities for you to move on with several of these women. And you chose not to because Giselle has determined that you are still mad at them. She tells you when you can be mad when you can be happy when you can be sad so you can give me a break and then they panned over to robin paying for her items and i said what in the basic budget is going on yeah they panned over and that thing says 68 dollars. let me tell y'all something <laughs> let me tell you something for me we want to go back to the days where the price tag said five thousand dollars for a pair of socks okay now we know that that is unreasonable in 2023 slash 2024 but when they panned over and showed that register and rob was paying 68 dollars and 24 cents baby i holler i said baby not the basic necessities moving forward so it's the morning that they leave for the trip everybody's getting to the airport they get on the plane sure honey they in the dr 
they get to the Dominican Republic and in the sprinter, Robin is telling them, you know, what's going to go on, honey. She's trying to rally the troops. She's telling them about the accommodations and the lack of itinerary. She's like, listen, we ain't going to be doing no kumbaya. I don't have y'all sitting on the beach with no fire. None of that. Okay. Do what you going to do. But leave me the hell alone. Basically do your own thing. I mean, I like it better that way anyway. Let me vacay my way. Half the time, y'all don't want to interact with each other anyway. So it's probably for the best. So then Karen thanked Robin because... Ray always goes to the DR and he has stayed in the villa that they're staying in, right? So she said one time he was down there and she called to the villa and a woman picked up. I said, baby, not Ray and his slacks creeping in the DR. So I creep. Yeah, I'm just creeping in the DR. <laughs> baby, not Ray and his slacks down there creeping in the DR. And you mean to tell me that Curtis is out there building orphanages and ain't nobody blinking an eye? Child, please. If Ray doing a little dirt, Curtis damn sure doing a little dirt. So then Karen gonna say, well, you know, Ray told me that it was the maid. Hey, maid, I see you got your maid outfit on like you always do. <laughs> Child, this is crazy. Shout out to Jocelyn and Mimi. Mm -mm -mm. What in the love and hip hop? It was the maid. Girl, ain't no maid gonna answer no phone. They barely want to clean the room. Now they answering the phone? Okay. No solo trips to the DR. You go solo, you gonna come back single. Because I'm not playing that. I don't care about no boys trip. I don't care about none of that. You will not go down to the Dominican Republic without me. Okay, it's just ain't gonna work. So they get to the villa. Everybody's impressed. Oh my gosh, Robin, you did so great. We're staying on the inside. It has inside. It has indoor plumbing. Honey, everybody just so excited. Wendy proposes a toast and the heifer's actually engaged. I said, I'm so proud of y'all. Baby steps. This might be okay. Everybody was actually engaged, y'all. So Kierna, she was invited as well. Now that lady is Wendy's friend, but Giselle knows her as well. So she's having stomach issues. So she goes straight to the restroom because she is going through it. But um, Kierna, let me say this to you, baby. That confessional look was everything. I said, okay, okay. Wendy got a little competition because Wendy be giving it in the confessional. And you looked damn good in that confessional, girl. I said, okay, let's get into it. So they find out that there's eight bedrooms and four of them are singles. Robin tells Karen, listen, girl, you gonna be doubling it up. Okay, you never have to share a room, but today you do. So then Karen starts singing, pass me by, old oh, gentle savior. When I tell you... <laughs> When I tell y'all I hollered, I said, oh my gosh, honey, not you singing. She refuses. She's like, I am not sharing our room with none of these people. It's not happening. So Robin said, well, me and Giselle always have to share. It's your turn. So Giselle and Neca and Ashley, they get a single. Basically her little friend group, they get to have their own rooms except Mia. And uh, Mia, I hope this is eye opening for you. Okay. You gonna sleep head to foot with somebody else. They don't really like you like that. So Karen's like, baby, look, I'm going to have to book my own room. So she's talking to the lady that has the accommodations. And she's like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I need a room with a view. So Ashley said, I'm going to give you my room, Karen. Here go Karen talking about, no, no, no. I need a view because I'm claustrophobic. Okay, Karen, you got a little lying problem. Now all of a sudden you're claustrophobic. That room that you stayed in in New Orleans had one window. What was the view? Bourbon Street? And y'all tripped me out with that because didn't you take a trip to Austin and it was construction outside in the parking lot? Karen, girl, goodbye and good night. Moving forward. So Robin is telling Karen, if you took Ashley's room, then you will be right by the water. But of course, you want to throw a fit. So Karen is telling Robin, shut up, Robin. And Robin is like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not exaggerating, y'all. She actually said, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Robin has gotten a big fat check this season of playing our damn face. We didn't get nothing from Robin. We didn't tie up them loose ends. We don't know why he was down to that hotel. We don't know what went on. And she has now hosted a trip and she has told Karen, blah, 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 blah. Mm, mm, mm. Moving forward. So Karen wants her to shut the hell up, but instead Robin is still doing whatever she's doing. I'll let fussing. The lady then disappeared and she never came back. So Karen's sitting on the couch like, I don't have a place to go. I'm homeless in the Dominican. Well, you should have taken the room that Ashley offered you. 
So Ashley goes over and sits on the couch and she's like, what's going on, Karen? What you going to do? Listen, you going to stay with Mia? She said, now, you know, Mia be saying all kind of stuff about me. I'm not staying with Mia. So Ashley agrees to let Karen have her room. Child, I wish I would. Let me tell you something, grand dom. You will be on the dom couch because you should have taken my off, off for the first time. Once I lay my wig down, you're not getting my room. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not getting my room. I don't know what to tell you. Absolutely not. In the next scene, Kieran is in a room, right? In her room. And Giselle comes in to, I guess, check on her. Now, she knows her through Cal because Kieran used to be a hairdresser. Or as they say, hairstylist. The old people say hairdresser. She used to be a beautician. <laughs> she used to be a beautician. Kieran said, look, thank you for checking on me because nobody else checked on me. Here go Giselle because she couldn't wait to hear that. Talking about, I mean, you visibly looked sick. You know what? Them not checking on her and they're supposed to be her friends. That's typical. Girl, please. You don't know what they were going to do. Give them a second. You're just trying to stack the numbers in your favor and you ain't fooling me. I'm sorry. I just don't see anything Giselle does as genuine. Everything has a motive and an agenda. She is not checking on that woman to make sure that she was okay and bring her a damn ginger ale and some saltines. She was making sure that she likes her so that she can get her to dislike Wendy and Candace and she ain't fooling me. In the next scene, Robin, Ashley, and Mia meet up before they go to play golf. And Giselle has the bright idea since Karen shaded in NECA saying she lived in North Potomac when she lives in Potomac proper and she actually owns her home. She wants to crown her the new Grand Dame of Potomac. A uh, side note, Ineka, your vacation DR wig looks good. It looks good, girl. I said, okay, DR wig. So they go out and they have this crowning ceremony. Karen talking about, you told them what I said? It was supposed to be a girl's moment. Ma'am, what? <laughs> Karen, I don't know if that triple 20 got you losing your damn mind or what. You shading this woman is supposed to be a girl's moment? Anyway, so Ineka is wearing the crown and heavy is the head that wears the crown child. So now she is the grand dame of Potomac 2.0 or she may be the princess of Potomac. I don't know and I don't give a damn. And that was the end of the episode. Tell y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I did like the fact that all of the ladies were getting along. I did like that. The sit down didn't go nowhere. They just going to have to agree to disagree. And NECA, you came in with an agenda. You listen to Lebe. She is a mess box. Wendy, you got to apologize for calling the girl a crackhead. Ma'am, you got to apologize for saying this woman's mom was a witch. Okay. And some of the allegations that you were spewing out, they can be very dangerous. So you're going to have to own it a little bit more than you owning it. Okay. Or else y'all not going to be moving forward or doing nothing else. Y'all comment down below. I'm going to comment back. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.